And that then leads us into issues of all proteins aren't equal. You know, amino acids aren't equal in every protein. So then yesterday, my son came home and he was in, he's about 13 years old and he came home. He was in the worst mood. He was crabby, irritable, just like snapping at everything. And I said, what did you eat today? Like, what did you, what did you have? And I knew, I know he had gone out for lunch with his friends and there was only carbohydrates. He had only had basic, I mean, maybe there was a gram somewhere, you know, accumulated of protein. I was like, you sit down and you have some ground beef and then we're going to talk. And literally within 25 minutes, he was like, he was ba- I said, oh, my Andreas is back. Like my normal <laughs> son you know, I can, is back. I can, I can totally relate. My birthday was yesterday. And I must admit, I did carbohydrate loading. And, and so I had to get my protein back balanced today. <laughs> Around the idea of nitrogen balance. And I'm saying this because the vast majority of people who listen to the show are women, typically perimenopausal and menopause. And one of the biggest challenges I find with my beautiful women is that we still have this hang up around somehow that meat or just a lot of protein is a very male centric effort. It's like man, fire, grill, barbecue, you know, (laughs) rather than yes, it's also, but it's also important for you as well. So can we talk briefly about nitrogen balance and how the maybe inefficiency of protein assembly changes with age. And we want to be thinking about not only the protein that we're taking in, but potentially also the protein that we're, or I should say maybe more accurately, the nitrogen that we're taking in, but also how we may be losing on the other end of nitrogen. Like when we're thinking about nitrogen balance, like nitrogen in versus nitrogen out. What we know is that early in life, our whole body development is very heavily driven by hormones, insulin, growth hormone, IGF-1. And so I started my career studying malnutrition in Africa. And we know that children can grow with really bad diets, you know, without being, you know, just absolutely deficient, they will still grow and develop and we can reproduce. And that's probably all survival. But somewhere after age 30, we start getting into that aging phenomena. <laughs> Some, and you know, that's a vague, you know, is it 30 or 40? I don't know. But by 40, we know that we begin to have a downward decline in certain metabolic aspects. And one of those is our rate of protein turnover. So I mentioned that we have to make 300 grams of protein per day. But as we get older, we get less efficient at that. And the older we get, the more inefficient we get. And so our ability to repair our body structures, you know, if you fall, if you sprain an ankle or break a bone, it takes a lot longer to repair that when you're 65 than it does when you're 16. And right. there's reasons for that that are all metabolic. But one of the great discoveries by Bob Wolf and the Galveston group in the late 90s Uh, sort of the same time we were discovering the leucine story, they discovered that basically while there's a decrease in efficiency as we get older in protein turnover, if you give more protein, you can overcome it. So the capacity is still there. And so what we know in the aging process is that you don't need less protein. You actually need more protein and of a higher quality. So you need a you need protein with more of those essential amino acids and you you need a higher amount of them. So nitrogen balance protein as we get older those terms become more misleading because we sort of now are interacting with aging and what we can do when we're 16 or 25 we can't do when we're 55 or 65. And so we need a different approach. So the protein handling gets poorer, but you can overcome that by increasing your protein intake. And this is going to lead very beautifully into protein quality as well. And that's really where the leucine story comes in. When you're, when you're 16, you're not really very sensitive to leucine. If you have a 10 gram meal of protein, you'll, you know, develop protein synthesis. If you have a 20 gram, you'll develop twice as much. Uh, when you're over 40, We know that a 10 gram meal, a 20 gram meal will have zero effect on muscle protein synthesis. The body is insensitive to it. And we know that you become more and more sensitive to the leucine amount in the meal to actually trigger protein synthesis. So 
you know, how we regulate as a 20 year old is totally different than how we regulate after 40. The hormones aren't really driving it anymore. So insulin, growth hormone are still important. If you were totally devoid, that would be a big problem. But they're mm. just really kind of baseline. They have to be there. It takes very little insulin to actually be involved in protein synthesis when you're older. But what we now know is the body then becomes totally sensitive to resistance exercise and the protein, and particularly a signal leucine. And we can go into a little more detail, but leucine is what we call a branch chain amino acid. And there are three of them, leucine, valine, isoleucine. And those three are totally unique in that they're really only metabolized in skeletal muscle. All the other amino acids, the other 17, are metabolized mostly in the liver, but these three are only metabolized in the muscle. And so the muscle has evolved to recognize those as a meal signal. When you eat a meal, the muscle sees exactly how much leucine you ate, and when it reaches a certain threshold, it says, oh, okay, that meal was adequate, I can turn on protein synthesis. And so if you only have a 15 gram meal of protein, muscle won't see enough leucine to turn it on. Where if you have a 35 gram meal of protein, muscle will say, ah, I've got enough protein to turn on this very expensive process of muscle protein synthesis. People need to understand that the body regulates liver synthesis of protein very differently. In the middle of night when you're starving, the body has to be making liver proteins. If it stops, you die immediately. So where does the liver get its amino acids? Well, it gets it from muscle during the middle of the night. So muscle becomes what we call catabolic. And so we have to replace that every day. And the only way you replace it is having meals that have more than 30 grams of protein. So if you go through the day with very small meals of protein, you'll protect your liver, but your muscle will be continuously catabolic. And we think that's a huge issue of aging, particularly in adult women. We know that 40% of women over 60 actually are below the RDA, which is about 56 grams per day. That's God, extremely that's low and probably accounts for both muscle problems and bone problems in, elder, in older women. 